Alan Bennett's brilliant novella, The Uncommon Reader, is about an old woman who, through reading, discovers her own humanity. The old woman in question is the Queen of England, who one day steps out of her palace in order to yell at her barking dogs, and there discovers parked on the street what we in America would call a bookmobile. More or less out of propriety, she decides to check out a book, and then another the next week, and then another, and so on, until at last her sole objective in life is reading. As you can imagine, this causes all sorts of problems for those around her, who would rather she act as she has always acted, which is to say, like a queen. Even the dogs are irritated by this new hobby of hers, as this humorous passage illustrates. Indulged and bad-tempered though they were, the dogs were not unintelligent, so it was not surprising that in a short space of time they came to hate books as the spoil sports they were, and always have been. Indeed, her reading even begins to have a negative effect on the queen herself, for she becomes annoyed by all of her royal duties, duties which she used to perform with a certain interest, but now can barely stand to perform at all, as they take away time from her reading. That said, the more she reads, the more she learns, and what she is learning most of all is how to be human. Because she has never really been a human, only a queen, and the duty of a queen is to be quite something other than human. The first instance of her transformation comes when she apologizes for a misunderstanding with the servant. In the past, she never gave much thought to her servant's feelings, but now that she has come to know the intimate lives of others through reading, she has developed a sense of empathy. In time, this empathy for others transforms into an empathy for herself. She realizes that she doesn't have a voice. This strikes people around her as odd, for a queen may speak at will, but that of course is not what she means. No, what she now desires is individual expression. She wants to speak knowing what she is saying is her own. And for this, she decides to turn to writing. As was the case with The Clothes They Stood Up In, Bennett's writing in The Uncommon Reader is both precise and humane, with wonderful touches of humor spread throughout. Furthermore, Bennett is every bit as empathetic towards his queen as the queen becomes towards herself and others. But of course, that is as it should be, for there are profound parallelisms between life and literature, as the queen notes when the prime minister suggests to her that she ought to be above literature. Above literature, said the queen, who is above literature? You might as well say one was above humanity. <laughs>